Shields up, Iron Breakers. We're kind of here coming at you with another video. Welcome back to Monster Hunter Rise, and today we're going to be talking about the PC version. I'd like to thank Capcom for providing me with early access to the game so that I could do this video and future coverage that I'm going to be bringing to you here on the channel. As a matter of fact, we're going to be streaming the whole thing all over again on the PC side of things. And in case you guys want to watch that, then make sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon so that you might eventually get notified. And if you end up enjoying this video or if it, uh, you know, informs you in any way then feel free to hit the like button as well because it helps me out in the algorithm because youtube for some reason doesn't really like me all that much but hey i like you so there's that anyway let's talk about this uh so i've played over 700 hours of this game on the nintendo switch i think it's safe to assume that i like it quite a bit as I've always liked to tell you guys when I'm talking about Monster Hunter, you should know that I'm very biased towards Monster Hunter because I like Monster Hunter titles. And, you know, I just want to put that all out on the table in case you guys are wondering what type of person I am if you're watching this video. For, if this happens to be uh, my first video that you happen to consume. Now, this is not going to be a traditional review. And the reasoning behind that is because I already did a traditional review of Monster Hunter Rise back when it came out on the Switch. And that review is pretty much still valid. And I've spent a lot of hours working on that review. And I don't really see the need to do it all over again because I would be saying the exact same things with one exception. And that exception was actually a complaint because one of the complaints that I had in my review in a complaint and observation, whatever you want to call it, was the fact that the game was actually not complete when it came out on the Switch because the story didn't end. Now, the game had more than enough hours to justify its asking price, from my personal opinion. I mean, I played over 100 hours, and I probably put over... By the time I had done that review, and I probably put, like, well over 100 more before uh, they added new content, which gave me reason to keep going and going and going until now we're sitting at over 700 hours. But, um, yeah, my complaint in that review was, that, you know, again, the story was not all there because of COVID and other situations, but they implemented the story through patches and stuff like that. But on the PC version, you get the whole thing. As a matter of fact, for those of you wondering just how many of the event quests we are going to be getting on the PC side of things, we're going to be getting it all the way until the Apex Mizutsuni Emergency. Now, that is not all of the events that have come out on Switch. But it is damn near close, and uh, I'm pretty sure that they're going to be implementing the events faster than we have on the console so that they get everybody caught up. Because like I've stated, they have um, expressed interest in diving deeper into the PC market and having the PC market representing a bigger portion of their sales. And they know that a part of that is going to be making sure that things come out day and date. I've been talking about this often because I want to make sure that people understand you're not going to get screwed over like what happened with Iceborne, okay? At least that is the information that we're working with right now. This is what I know right now from the information that they've been talking about. So Sunbreak will come out day and date, and I believe that whatever the next Moss Hunter is going to be is also going to come out day and date because that is quite simply what makes sense. So obviously when it comes to the PC version, uh, one of the most important things to talk about is going to be visuals, performance, and, you know, what other exclusive features we might have. What I can tell you is that the game looks friggin' gorgeous on the PC. Now, is that to say that this is gonna look like Super Omega Next Gen? No, it's not. Let's get real. Like, the game looks really good for a game that was ported over from Switch. That's what you gotta keep in mind. This game was initially developed for the Switch, and they're bringing it over to the PC. As a matter of fact, I wish they would also bring it over to PlayStation 5, PlayStation 4, the Xbox, all of that stuff, because I'm the kind of guy that's like, well, sure, I get it, exclusives, all of that, you, you know, there's deals going on and whatnot, but at the end of the day, I just like seeing more people get access to video games. Maybe I'm a little bit over-optimistic that way, but either way, what I can tell you, game looks really good. You guys can see the footage. The footage right now um, that I'm uploading to YouTube is going to be at 1440p. That is because my capture computer cannot capture 4K. Guess what? Hardware is very, 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 very hard to come by. I'm really sorry. So it's 1440p, but I'm actually playing it at 4K. Now, the machine that I'm playing this on has a 6900 XT, which is an AMD card. And it is able to run it just fine at 4K 60fps, no problems really whatsoever. Uh, but I also tested it in different hardware because I know that, you know, everyone's hardware is going to be different. And I happen to also have a laptop and I was like, you know what, I'm really going to put this bad boy to the test. I'm going to make this thing run at 1440p 
on my laptop and see how it's going to handle it. Now, my laptop is at this point like three, maybe four years old. Not exactly sure. It's got a 1070 on it, which is, you know, it's a pretty good card. But at the end of the day, let's just say it's not the most updated card, right? A 1070. Come on. On a laptop, it ran flawless at 1440p on my laptop on a 1070 and I was like what the hell is this black magic that they got going here now obviously you guys are going to be quick to point out Rurikon come on it's a ported game from the switch yeah but it's running at 1440p 60 fps max settings so there's that so it ran fine on my laptop and Gaijin also tested it out in his computer I talked to Gaijin on a regular basis as you guys can imagine he was planning on doing a video I'm not sure if you will be doing a video because he had some problem recording footage because of HDR but either way, he told me that on his 2080, he was able to run the game at 4K 120 FPS. You guys might be wondering, well, why, Rurikon, why are you running it at 4K 60? Because I can't find a good monitor. That's the, um, that's the semiconductor shortage for you. It's like everything goes prohibitively expensive and I'm not about to like, you know, donate my kidney and my liver just to get a monitor. I'm pretty happy playing things at 60 FPS. I'd like more, but you know, it is what it is. Either way, so in terms of performance, what I can really tell you is from my experience, it's really, really good. No problems whatsoever. I think the game is really well optimized. You're talking about RE Engine, which is the same engine that is running, uh, I believe, Resident Evil Village. So, you know, if Resident Evil Village ran decently on your system, you should be pretty much okay. But, you know, tested it on this computer on my laptop, Gaijin tested on his computer, and all three tests come out saying amazing, buttery smooth, which is why I put that on the title of this video. So there you go. That's kind of like what you can expect. You already know that I like the game because I've played a ton of it. So it's like in terms of animations and all that stuff, I love it. In terms of audio, it's good also. Now, a couple of things that I would like to point out. There's uh, some obviously... With uh, the PC side of things, they're going to add a couple of uh, PC-specific features that we can't really tweak on the consoles, and obviously I tested all of those out. As a matter of fact, I did a separate video of that, and you can test those out on your system as well, because there's a demo on Steam that you can go and you can download and test all of those settings for yourself. And when I initially tested them, I left some feedback, in particular to one very specific um, graphic thing that I like, which is I like lens distortion. I know that not everybody likes it. Um, this is something that I, I saw used to good, uh, to a good extent in Bloodborne as well as Destiny. Uh, and I know, I don't want to get stuck on talking about Destiny. I'm just saying like from a visual standpoint, a little bit of, um, lens distortion. I actually liked it on the edges of the screen. But Monster Hunter's lens distortion, uh, in Monster Hunter Rise, I felt it was too strong. And I was, you know, I was hoping they would add like a slider or something that would let me choose between low or average or high no it's just on and off and is way way too strong so it might be something cool for you to take a couple of screenshots but that's about it another um criticism that i would have is the game has depth of field that you can turn on and off and you probably want to turn that off i think it comes off by default um but yeah you probably might want to turn that off at least for now because depth of field is a little bit weird doesn't seem to focus on the right things so we'll see how, uh, if they end up, you know, changing that because at the end of the day, I'm still playing the early version of the game. I'm assuming there might be like a day one patch or something. Hopefully they'll get some feedback on this. But yeah, depth of field is not, is not working as well as I would like. So those are my two things. I wish lens distortion could be a little bit toned down and I wish that depth of field worked a little bit better. But other than that, everything else is pretty much good. Also, once again, um, I'd like to praise Capcom for having motion blur defaulted to off. If only more developers would think like that, that'd be so nice instead of like having it on with no setting to turn it off because that's ridiculous. Why would you do that? But um, yeah, there's a lot of options for you to play around with. So my advice is check it out for yourself. You can check it out in the demo. There is, however, one thing that you cannot get in the demo. These are special filters that Capcom added into the game, which um, basically, you know, th this is just like a, a niche thing. I don't think you're going to be wanting to play the game in black and white for a lot of time. But then again, you know, if you want to do that, you do you. I did think that it was kind of cool that they had black and white and then they had black and white movie style. 
And the black and white movie style adds like, you know, visual artifacts to the screen and whatnot to kind of simulate that you're watching it in an old movie theater. And the cool thing about it is that they also changed the sound to be adequate as if you were watching it in an old movie theater. And I thought that was like a neat little touch. You can play it almost like, you know, those old Japanese movies and whatnot. There's also a sepia filter that does the same thing if you go into movie mode. But when it came to filters, one that I particularly like was the Warring Land style. I thought that was pretty cool because it adds like visual contrast to reds. Reminded me a little bit of Sin City, even, you know, it's not exactly like Sin City for those of you that watch that movie. But it, it has, you know, it has, you can see from the footage that I'm showing you right now in the video, I think it looks interesting. That's the most interesting filter that I've seen. But, you know, obviously I'm going to be playing um, most of the game as default as it gets. But when it comes to the PC version, there really isn't that much more to say. I mean, I, I'm, I don't know exactly what you guys expect me to tell you. I think that the PC version runs great. There's virtually no loading times if you play this on um, an NVMe SSD, which is what I'm doing here. Uh, I mean, the loading times were already exceptional on the Nintendo Switch, so I imagine that even if you install on an HDD, you're going to be seeing some pretty low loading times because, again, it worked great on the Switch. Like, me and Gaijin, we actually talked about this. We were both impressed with how fast the loading times were on the Switch. On PC, there's basically no loading time if, if you put it on a good SSD. Like, there, you literally just go from the town to the hunt, no loading time whatsoever. I'm, do I even see, like, a... I don't even think we see a loading screen. It just, like, fades to black and pops, back you, pops you back into the quest. So, you know... Assuming that you have good enough hardware, you shouldn't even be um, seeing that. Uh, there's obviously keyboard and mouse support, although I don't know exactly why you would play this game with keyboard and mouse. I mean, I get it. Some people, you guys really like playing games on keyboard and mouse. I can't do it, so I can't tell you how good or bad it is because the amount of key bindings that I would have to do and get used to it probably be awkward for a good, like, five to, you know, six hours or something until I would get the muscle memory. I'm an old man, okay? I'm gonna be 40 this year. <laughs> Take it easy on me. But um, ultimately, I, I should also say that I've only played a couple of hours, and the reasoning behind that is because, you know, I wanted to see enough of the game to tell you guys, you know, what's the PC version like? Is it good? Is it bad? I think it's good. I think it's excellent. Like I said, buttery smooth. And I think the game itself is good. And um, this way, I'm going to be fairly fresh when I start streaming the game uh, on release date. So hopefully you guys will see me there. Now, I know that some people are going to be concerned about uh, the Nouveau. Uh, according to the store page, the Nouveau is still a thing. Uh, I don't really see it impacting performance too much, but I guarantee, I can almost guarantee that the game would run better without the Nouveau. The Nouveau, as far as I'm concerned, is a cancer in this industry. And I actually want you guys to do something. If you are someone that is specifically not buying the game because of the Nuvo, write it in the comment section. Because that way at least there's some kind of like a feedback loop. If anybody from Capcom watches this video, they'll know, hey, look at that. There's a bunch of people who said they didn't buy the game because of the Nuvo. Because I get it. I completely understand. Uh, I'm going to play the game because I want to play the game and life is short. And like I said, I'm 40. <laughs> so I'm going to play the game and I'm going to stream it and I'm going to try to have as best of a time as I possibly can. Might do some multiplayer hunts. Not sure how I'm going to be handling that because, you know, there is that thing about Rise being exceptionally easy uh, in the lower ranks. But then again, in the high ranks, there's actually some interesting challenges. As a matter of fact, if you've been seeing a lot of people talk about how Rise is super easy, ask them, did you do the, emer the Apex emergency quests? Were they also easier than anything you've ever faced before? Did you do the super version of the final boss? Was, was that also super easy? Like, ask them about some of the latest events that Capcom had in the game. And I know some people will say too little too late, but it's like, look, that's going to be to each their own. I think Monster Hunter Rise is a fantastic game. I personally really like it. I think the PC version is looking really good, and I'm going to be playing it. I'm going to be playing it with Charge Blade. I'm going to be exploring that weapon because I didn't play the Charge Blade almost at all on the Switch. And I think it'll be a, an interesting, fun time, and hopefully I'll see you guys there. One thing that I also tested, because specifically because of the Nuvo, because I know this is going to be a concern for some people, was whether or not you can play the game offline. And you can. 
Uh, you guys know you, you have that thing that you can go to Steam and you can go and say, oh, go offline. And then I went offline. And not only I went offline on Steam, I then restarted my computer after removing the Ethernet cable to make sure that there's no way that this thing can phone home. And I was able to run the game just fine. There was like an error at the start of the game that said like, oh, communication, whatever error because it detected that I couldn't connect to the internet. But it still launched the game. It still let me play the game. And that was my experience with that. So if you're someone that has to play offline, I would imagine that the game will run just fine offline. However, I like to, you know, cover my ass here, which is why I will also say that this is from the early access version of the game. And if they change anything in the game that stops that from working, that's not my fault. Okay, I tested it. It works for me and I can only report on the stuff that I've tested. It's just like I like to cover my bases nowadays because sometimes you see people doing some weird stuff with uh, with video games. Not that I have any reason to believe that Capcom would do that, but you know, I'll test it again once uh, the, the game gets updated to the actual live version as opposed to the early access that I have right now and see if all that stuff is still working and I'll let you guys know throughout my live streams. Hopefully I'll see you guys there. That's going to be it for this video. If you enjoyed it, once again, like I said, you can hit the like button. It helps me out a lot. Subscribe, bell notification icon, all that stuff. If you did not enjoy it, you can hit the dislike button, but YouTube doesn't care because it's not going to show you whether or not you disliked it. And it is actually annoying as hell to me because now people are wondering, hmm, does this Rurikon video have more likes than dislikes? And I wish I could just show it to you. But anyways, <laughs> I'm just rambling at this point. Thank you all very much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Stay strong. Stay safe. Peace out.